This video is about values in the digital world. It is the first of a series of videos that I'll produce about how values are important and how we use technology. The content of this video is basically looking at what are the challenges and opportunities that face us and young people face when they use technologies. So for example, uh, is it really us that drive technology or does technology also drive us and influence our values? So therefore we need to look at the impact of both, obviously the impact of our values on how we use technology, but also the impact of technology on our values which is a new phenomena in some way. So my research, basically in my research, I looked at, I, I interviewed young people and their parents and their teachers, and I looked at how their reasoning, how the more, their moral reasoning, emotions and behaviors, which is referred to as the moral domains, really influenced and mediated their use of, of technology. Because after all, we are moral as human beings because of how we think and how we feel and how we behave. The second issue I looked at is how we can foster more values so that the use of technology by young people is more moral. So technology has been really, uh, there's so much enthusiasm for it and for creativity and expression and so on. However, it also comes with challenges. So therefore, there are a few issues that we need to look at and that what values and abilities can govern the use of information and communication technologies by young people? And how can we help them respond to the challenges they face while using technologies? In many ways, we are at the beginning stages with respect to understanding the role of moral values and the values and the use of technology by young people, but by human beings. So what is the story? The story is very simple. People are both good and bad. This is an old story. People can be creative and, and can have moral agency. So that is that they can have more, make moral judgments and act on these in their lives. But at the same time, they can also be immoral while using technology. So in some way we're faced with a situation and that is that young people are in the driver's seat for good or for bad. So when we look at the challenges they face, you know, the, the, there might be a bit of a media panic and let's ban certain technologies, let's try and control them, which of course now is very difficult. Almost every young person has a phone in their pocket and there is no control. So therefore, who's driving this? The, the young people are driving this. Hence, we have to take into account how we can help them in their direction, in their uses. The other option is we do nothing. We put up with it. But actually what I'm arguing is that we can take into account the positive ways that young people interact online. So therefore, the, the, the question is always, you know, can kids do this on their own? Well, you know, some people say, you know, teens are natural experts of technology. We're, they're born into this, and this is how they've been all their lives. They've been in the digital world. And in some way, they know more about the new media environment than most adults do. However, the question has to be, do they naturally know what to do? Are they able to acquire the abilities and values to participate effectively in the digital culture on their own? The answer has to be no. And the reason for that is very simple, is that we assume that young people actively can reflect on their media experiences. In my experience with young people, many can do this. So that's very positive, but not all do this. Cyber, cyber safety programs are introduced into school to talk about protecting their privacy and, and their online life. However, there's far more to this Values and practices must actually underpin digital citizenship. Okay, so what do we do next? Do we drive technology or does technology drive us? That's the old question. This goes back a long time in human thought. Uh, 
So there's the view basically that technology is just a tool and we decide what to do with it. People kill, not guns. You may have heard that. And because technology is subservient to the values established by humans in the social sphere. The other side is that tools do influence people. It's a two-sided story. Technologies are shaped by the social interests of the people who produce them after all. All of the coding and the interests that are embedded in the design and deployments of technology are clearly present in the technology. And so therefore, when we interact with them, we would naturally consider, yes, these may influence us. All right. So essentially, it's the two-sided story. One of the great uh, inventions after the Second World War is the concept of systems theory or system understanding. And finally, when we've come to understand that life is a system interacting with another system, in this case, a young person interacting with social media, we have two systems that influence each other and have this circularity of input and output. So for example, the outputs of a young person is both the moral and immoral behaviors that they bring to the digital world. And on the other hand, the inputs that come from the digital world, the social media, are certain characteristics that will affect that individual. So it's a two-sided story, which is common sense. As Tyrone said, one of the students I interviewed said, what goes around comes around. I think it's very clear that this concept of circularity, uh, this is the cyber value systems model that I developed. And it shows that really it's a whole issue of circularity, whatever, what comes around does come around, what goes around comes around. And the circularity values are, are, are constantly, constantly being influenced from one system to another, in this case, human system and ICT environments or computer systems. So this brings us to the issue of a digital image. And that is that do we create, what do we create online? Do we create a digital image that is positive or a digital shadow? We know that people are concerned about their digital footprint. And so we know now that clearly young people are constructing their lives online. And so therefore we have to say, are they constructing a positive image of themselves or a negative image? In fact, in my research, I found that students were really concerned about the digital shadow, this negative digital image that they left behind. And you can see here that students felt that when one of the values that came out that they were so concerned about was students behaving irresponsibly. Why? Because they were bullying others, they were saying stupid things, they were, you know, really creating a very bad image for themselves and for others. The fact that they were bullying and power, they were bullying others and being inauthentic and so on. And all of these, these problems or these negative values really influence their digital shadow. So that's why we look at the, in this series at the impact of human values on the use of ICTs. Louise, 14 years old said, you don't think about your values when you post something. So clearly you can see that thinking and reasoning becomes important. Betty said on the internet, people think they can get away with a lot. There's the flip side of it. And that is they're on the internet, they're in this digital environment and suddenly the values go out the window. Why? Well, it's a little different, isn't it? We're influenced by the environment that we are in and values become an issue. Dishonesty, for example, all, you know, this person say they'll hang out with them. Sunja said, you probably don't hang out with them. You're just using their name to get friends and more like. If your value is being the coolest person, then you obviously might lie. So it's a two-sided story. But clearly, the first side is the impact of human values. So, for example, integrity and authenticity is a, an issue that I found is clearly lacking. One student said, I'm a completely different person online, depending on who I'm talking with. Now, you might say, well, that's true in the real world. We all sort of adapt our personalities when we discuss with other people. 
in the real world. But in the digital world for young people, this is even more so. Popularity and attention seeking is a powerful driver for teenagers. And that's a value that drove a lot of attention seeking and caused a lot of issues for young people. That's why irresponsibility was a real concern for young people. As John said, the more popular you are, the more you'll post things online without thinking because it's all about peer pressure. And the flip side now is let's have a look at the impact of ICT on human values. Let's start with reasoning and emotion. Right away, we understand that because of the distance, you know, the, the literature talks about this distance, this digital distance. And Tim said, well, there's a distance between you and the other person. And because of that distance, somehow you behave differently. Louise said, in real life, you say something and you, you see the look on people's faces, whether they approve or disapprove of what you're saying. So you can accommodate what they're talking about, what you're talking about. So here we see that the, our emotions are affected in the digital world because of that distance. We can't see, uh, we can't read facial expressions or, or tones of voice and so on. So what is the impact of all this? One of the impact, as we've said, as I said, is the digital shadow that is left behind. You know, the Tim said, well, people might behave like they normally do in person, but others may tend to differ from their actual real personality. Here again, an issue of inauthenticity. And the problem with inauthenticity for young people in the real world is they create these, they, they create these personas that are not authentic to themselves. So Benny said, well, if someone's growing up being two different people on the internet and in person, they're going to have split personality. If you're so used to being this way to someone face to face, then being the other way to someone on the internet, maybe you're going to lose some of your friends because they have found out who, who they you are really in both your lives. This also impacts the technology also impacts our empathy, not just our reasoning. And so we've talked about reasoning and, and we talked about being authentic and true and honest. Well, it certainly impacts empathy. That is, Suja said, some people may find it easier to put someone down or lie when they're not doing it face to face because they can't see the body language or the facial, facial expressions. They don't know from, their, from the other side if it's probably developing into anger or sadness. So finally, what makes us moral in the digital world? I mean, the question is, is what makes us world in, moral in the real world? And in the end, it can be brought down to the head, the heart, and the hand, or nice labels for reasoning, emotion, and behavior. Both moral psychology, computer ethics, and moral philosophy talk about these moral domains. So the moral, the moral, the, the digital moral framework that I developed is basically following this head, the heart, and the hand. And that is how we think, how we feel, and how we act. So we have to think out of integrity. What does that mean? It means that we have moral expectation of ourselves based on integrity, accountability, truth, honesty, and authenticity. All of the, whether it's moral psychology or computer ethics, these line up with integrity and with moral reasoning. On the other hand, we have to have a heart. In a sense, people call the heart is like the moral compass. You know, people say, what are we driven by? By reasoning? Yes, certainly in, in part when we study moral psychology, but we're also largely driven by our emotions. What makes us moral is the empathy and the having a sense of a conscience. These things drive our moral behaviors, drive our moral beings. And finally, it's also how we act, act out of character. So there's two dimensions there, and that is that we have to manage ourselves well. 
we have to have a sense of responsibility and self-control. But we also need to have, we need to have, we need to behave morally towards others, such as altruism and justice and respect underpin those moral behaviors. When we look at the order of values in the study that I did, we can see that in the end, responsibility, altruism, justice, self-control were at the top. These were values that the students felt were really critical for their well-being in the digital world. But for more reasoning, interestingly enough, was authenticity. They felt people had to be real, not two-faced, not two different personality. They had to feel a sense, certain sense of accountability. And also, of course, respect. <clears throat> and moral emotions was further, further down. But we can also have a look at what the parents and teachers felt were important for young people's use of information technology. Thank you for listening.